What's up guys? So welcome to part two of my resetting up Ponagachi. Now what we want to do next is we're going to want to connect by SSH. I had some things I wanted to do like for instance I was going to transfer over YPRI and just set it up on there. But let's go ahead and get our SSH connection set up correctly. So the first thing you'll notice is you're going to want to plug your little micro USB in the data port. So it's not the one on the end, but it's the one next to it. So you will notice that the green light is next to the other one. You want to ensure you're doing the one that's more towards the middle. Now when you first plug it up and hit the computer and plug it up on that side, you're going to note it's going to try to automatically connect on a wired connection and it does that automatically the problem is you need to set it not to be an automatic connection as is going to be the default on Linux you want to actually set up a static IP address this also will help us to reliably connect into the same IP address every time we connect our Ponagachi uh, as you can see he's crying right now uh, didn't get any handshakes last time no big deal we'll have another run on this later on. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this connection up. So what you want to do is you'll want to disconnect from the automatically connected one. You're going to notice if you don't do what I'm about to show you, you're going to have it continuously fail to connect over and over and over and over. So as shown in this picture, you're going to connect your micro USB here. The other end is going to go into your laptop or your desktop. And then what you're going to want to do is make sure you're disconnected from the ethernet and you're going to go ahead and see where it says auto ethernet up here that's what it says right here uh, we're going to connect to it but what we're going to do is we're going to edit the connection while it's working on that we're going to go ahead and right click we're going to hit edit our connections and then what we need to do is we need to edit this we don't want it to be an auto ethernet we actually want it to have a static IP. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to hit manual here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the IP address 10.0.0.1. Whoops, wrong window. Okay, so we have that IP address is going to be 10.0.0.1. Netmask is of course going to be 255. 255.255.0 and then our gateway we will set that to 10.0.0.1 and then you could optionally add DNS but I don't need it for what we're doing we will go ahead and hit save at this point. As you note at the top, it's still trying to connect to that automatic connection. That's a big problem. A lot of Ponegachi's users are not reading the directions, so they may miss that you actually have to set these IP addresses. So we'll go ahead and hit save on this. And when we do that, there it is. It automatically successfully connected. So now we have a direct network connection to our Ponegachi device. And so we're going to go ahead and pull up our terminal. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open a tab here and we'll just SSH in for the first time. SSH pi at 10, 10.0.0.2, which is most likely it. Yep, it's the first IP address assigned. So the network gateway is going to be 10.0.0.2. Uh, one and then our IP address for the Ponagachi is going to be 10.0.0.2. Now, if you for some reason have a different IP address assigned to your Ponagachi on the local area network, which is basically the networking between your micro USB end in the Ponagachi and your laptop, so it's a, a micro network here. And once you connect, you're going to get this, do you want to accept this? This is an unknown fingerprint. Well, it's the first time you're connecting, so this is very normal to see, do, are you sure you want to connect to this? Uh, so we're going to hit yes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to type our default password, and we can always change it after. And that is going to be raspberry. 
Okay, there's our first login. Now we're in the Ponagachi. Now the next thing I'd like to do, I just wanted to transfer, you can do whatever you want with this. For instance, let's first go over here. If you want to set up your config file later, you can go into slash etc slash Ponagachi. And in that directory, you're going to see the config.toml. It's the very same file that you originally had set up on your boot directory during the initial setup. But if you forgot to do that or you didn't do that, from now on, it's going to be stored right here, slash etc, slash ponagachi, and then config.toml. So you can edit that at any time. If you want to add your home Wi-Fi network and whitelist it, it's all very easy to do. You can just fill it out. Uh, they give you a basic example network. You just simply replace that with your home Wi-Fi network. I don't want to reveal mine, so you can take a look at the uh, instructions page right here. You can see the example, you name your Ponagachi in this part of the file, then uh, you're going to whitelist your network for the actual uh, whitelisting so that it's not going to de-authenticate your own devices. Because that's what the Ponagachi is going to do. It uses artificial intelligence. What it does is it goes around sniffing and looking for networks to essentially do an ethical pen test on. So it's going to de-authenticate the devices on those networks, the network, and then what that does is it forces them to re-authenticate with the Wi-Fi network. Now, in the process of that, the Ponagachi is sniffing. It's sniffing for handshakes, and it's going to pick up every one that it's able to grab. So, especially when devices are further away, you might actually get more handshakes because sometimes they have to send a couple authentication attempts. Uh, so, if you have devices that are consistently giving up handshakes in something like Kismet, you're noticing continual handshakes. Well, you might want to move your devices closer or possibly even turn up a little bit of the amplification for Wi-Fi. Now, back to what we're doing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do what I plan to do, which I'm going to use the SCP command. This is a secure transfer file option using SSH. So SCP, I do capital O flag, and then the file I want to transfer. In my instance, it's going to be yprimaster.tar.gz. It's just some scripts I wrote that I wanted to add to the Ponagachi and play around with the authentication uh, spoofing MAC addresses. So we'll go ahead and transfer that over, and we'll go ahead and do that now. So what I'm going to do is hit SCP, capital O flag, and then the file I want to transfer, and then the login, which is pi at 10.0.0.2. Okay, hitting enter now. Uh, we've transferred our file over here. Oops. We're going to put a directory here. This is where we want to send it. Slash pi. We're just going to send it over there. Now we have to enter our password. So don't forget to do that. My, originally, I didn't type that. You want to put a colon after the IP address here, pi at 10.0.0.2, and then slash home slash pi is going to send our file right to the home directory. And you can use this SCP command if you're using Linux and you manage different machines or networks. It's a secure way to transfer files. Don't use FTP. That is way, way out of date. So go ahead and type in your default password once again and it's going to transfer over that file. Okay, we've done so. Now let's go right back over to our terminal where we're already logged in, where we just logged in using SSH. Now we can go back to our home directory and we can see we're in our home directory and there we are. We have the file right there. So at this point I'm going to extract the file. I'm going to use vzxf verbose for v and the extract and we're going to decompress this archive. So at this point, we're just going to type out the file name. And there we are. Okay, our Ponagachi is out of date. So it's giving us a bunch of, you know, just messages about the timestamp. So don't worry about that. That's just because we don't have a hardware clock. You can add one if you want to add one to your Ponagachi. If you w care about the time and all those different things, um, you can always add a hardware clock. It's, a, it's totally optional though. It's not going to make it work any better or anything. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go into the directory 
And now what we're going to do is we're basically going to run it as root first. We're going to log in as root, so sudo s flag, and then we have root. So now that we have root privileges, we can run the installer script, and we'll go ahead and do that. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a static spoofed IP for the um, deauthentication device. So we're going to go ahead and do that for the moment. And I will say, yes, I will start a disinfo identity each boot. Just, you know, and this also, there are times where things will leak. This can help that and prevent that. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And I'm going to make some updates to this. I've just been really busy with other stuff lately. Um, I want to, there's some new ideas I want to incorporate. And then what we'll do, I'm just going to use the P flag. And at this point, we have our device, we have that. And it should work as long as it's the right device name, that is. Okay, great. All right, cool. So, that's what we've done. Right now, what we've done is we've done our first SSH login to the Ponagachi. We've transferred over Wi-Fi. You can install anything else. So consider this just getting started with SSH on Ponagachi video. Um, if you want to install something else, any application, you sometimes can just simply copy things over to the micro SD card, but it really is a pain to do it that way. So using SSH is going to allow you to boot it up without having to deal with it running in the network deauthentication mode. It's going to run just as a regular device. You set up your Ethernet connection using a simple USB to micro USB cord, and then you have access just like any other Linux machine. You have a full Linux computer right here with your Ponagachi with a nice e-ink screen. And we may play with some other things. Actually, someone left a comment the other day talking about another project that uses this very same build, this very same hardware combination. So I think we're going to play around with that coming up. But of course, I'm going to have more coming out on the Pinagachi. Just wanted to share, you know, what I was up to today. And it's actually pretty late. It's actually 3 in the morning. So I'm just recording what I'm up to. Um, and... I'm going to also play around with some sniffing and checking out some deauthentications with Kismet while we're working with the Ponagachi. So I'll be doing more videos on the Ponagachi. Just wanted to show that. Now you could also set up key authentication. That's yet another thing. Um, you can use the SSH copy ID command for that. So if you want to set up SSH copy ID, you can absolutely do that as well. I actually have a video or a a blog post on that. So if you're interested, I have a video, a blog post showing you how you can set up SSH key authentication. What that'll do is it'll also use a key instead of having to enter the passphrase every time you use SSH. So I think I'm going to cut this video short today because it is three in the morning. I'd like to get some sleep, but we will pick up on this later. Just wanted to share what I'm up to and build up to some of our next tests with the Ponagachi. And of course, I'll be covering other stuff. I feel like um, I wanna get some things together before I cover some other types of material, but I uh, wanted to get started with SSH because I felt like I cut the last one a bit short. So this is part two of our getting set up the Ponagachi. Uh, of course, we'll have another video coming out as well. Uh, so make sure to follow, like the video, share it with others who have an interest in Ponagachi, have an interest in Linux, have an interest in privacy, security, and I appreciate your guys' support. If you want to support this, you can go to bmc.link slash politictech, and I'll be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy.